Okay. You will not be getting a uh, complete overview of Dragonfly Industries here. Where I'm just going to do the small vessels here and hope that the video turns out a little better this time than my first draft. The first draft I was going to do all this wonderful showing you the uh, little tour of the bases, some of the small vessels, the ones that are in work and progress, the ones that are completed. Um, I figure oh, as the game progresses some of these are going to go through remodels as I change my, my mind about things, as they change the blocks and appearance of things. You know, there's, you know, there's still a lot uh, that can be changed here. Um, but uh, my first video ended up being very choppy at the beginning of the video and then smooth at the end and my uh, impression was that I had too many of my small blueprints all gathered around so they might have been uh, class size one, two, three, maybe a, a couple class size fives but that collection even though as I was going around the game and it seemed to be just smooth when I went and watched the video it really chopped up really something awful and uh, so you could hear my voice just fine but the video it just it, it was it made it uh, really pointed out the inadequacies of my machine you know so I, even though it looked fine in the game for me as I was doing stuff the uh, recorded video was just terrible so here we are and we'll just focus on the small vessels here uh, brought them over here by themselves hopefully this will bring my uh, uh, workload on the computer down to the point we can get a decent video. This is the Blue Hawker, one of my first small vessels. This is actually not the way it looked at first. Before uh, this got a, a bit of a remodel with Alpha 7 when they introduced the small vessel uh, warp drive and at that point uh, it was actually part of the, because I did a, a survival game to get a feel for some of the changes in the game and so when they did Alpha 7 they introduced that and I found that I needed to actually to get the materials to build my capital vessel I needed to take a small vessel warp drive uh, trip and so then a bunch of my small vessels ended up getting refits in this case the Blue Hawker ended up being uh, made a bit wider now it turns out I had actually made an alternate version of, a Blue, of the Blue Hawker and I was going to discontinue that one because uh, I was like, I'll oh, just keep with the original Blue Hawker, kind of, you know, keep myself from getting too carried away with all my various blueprints. Well, uh, when they introduced that change to the game, uh, then I found that uh, I was trying to fit a warp drive. And then my initial uh, work with the Blue Hawker to add a warp drive, it just did not look good. So I ended up... Uh, pulling out that uh, fortunately had saved the other blueprint uh, even though I was discontinuing it pulled it off put a warp drive in there and I thought it worked a lot better to add a warp drive to that uh, and so that became my blue hawker this is meant to be a starting vessel it is built with just your iron copper and silicon we have uh, access to a bunch of the internals here not everything may be accessible that way, but a fair bit of it is. But here we have our cavity for the warp drive. So you can fit a warp drive in there and, and fit the fuel tank right on that little ledge right there. Then, uh, since we're talking about uh, deeper space travel, we have some cavities where you can add the mobile constructors. So this is meant to be a starting uh, small vessel. It actually uh, pushes a 22 meters per second squared in all six directions minimum with a little extra boost kick for forward thrust. So forward acceleration is a little better than the stuff but the idea being is this thing can still, uh, for a starter vessel, do fairly well. And it's, uh, for a starter vessel, without any hard steel, it's probably uh, a modest vessel. At least I uh, like to think so. Okay. 
The Orange Darner over here was actually built for a challenge. It was not, uh, it was one of my more recent builds. I was originally going to essentially take the my Hawkers or my Daughter series and essentially just build a hollow uh, interior, kind of make a shuttle out of it. Uh, the, stuff, the idea being like you had a patient uh, transport. In this case, here's your little bed. Here in Alpha 7, the beds are not actually a thing for uh, small vessels. So I just made my uh, my own little sort of patient bed. If the power was turned on in here, let's go ahead and turn the power on. You can see uh, we have a nice little thing about patient name John Doe. It's kind of like you would be monitoring the patient here. I had a little fun with the uh, statements up there on some displays uh, there that are harder to see, but they are there giving uh, some information. This, since this was built for a challenge, one of the things you had to have was a warp drive. While my plan, since we have the warp drives uh, for small vessels, would have been to add a warp drive. Due to the small space I needed to fit it in for the challenge, this vessel ended up getting the warp drive put into that pod, weapons over in this pod, thrusters split basically between those two pods, and uh, skipping the wings. If I uh, had, you know, I think in this case the challenge actually was a good good choice for this SV. Instead of being quite what I envisioned for it, it ends up looking more like an ambulance. Um, so I think that was a uh, that was a good uh, some of the choices I ended up having to make to fit it into the challenge. Uh, so now over here we have the Red Hawker. I do love uh, wondrous variety, and so I wanted another. Uh, the hawkers are both starting vessels, only iron, copper, and silicon. I wanted it to look a little bit different than the other one. Also, by the time I built the, this one, I had a little more awareness and understanding of uh, red lines and uh, dense atmospheres. So this one actually has more in the way of generators for tolerance uh, for that. Uh, it is a bit heavier, uh, loses a little bit... Uh, for acceleration in all six directions, but we're still pushing 20 meters per second uh, squared in all six directions. A little more uh, thrust underneath, uh, in this case, uh, for higher gravity worlds, so we still have some tolerance for that. And like the Blue Hawker, we have our cavities for the warp drive, alleged to put our fuel tank, and although it's not such a quite the big opening, but that actually, that space in there is a full three blocks long so you can fit in your mobile constructors so this is uh, it's it's designed uh, really because uh, someone like me I don't uh, that's part of me that's a little lazy so if I bring in and I build my first small vessel to get me up to the moon to get my cobalt uh, at least here in Alpha 7 that's uh, the pattern for making the warp drop jump away from there yes I could then put something with small jets warp drive and re uh, really have something a little more kick to it but I was like well what if I could just throw the warp drive right into my starting SV and just take that thing as long as it's you know it's because at that point I'm I don't have uh, much in the way of sathium unless I've been salvaging uh, points of interest and stuff so Realistic, I'm, it's probably not going to be much tougher. It's just going to be more maneuverable, and these things I think are good enough. Uh, so just throwing in the warp drive and all the other stuff I'm looking for, they'll take me to the next uh, leap. Then for a complete leap up here, now we actually this, uh, we jump into our small jets, our hardened steel, and some of our actually our advanced materials for the rail guns, and in this case uh, the homing rocket launchers. The original of the uh, an Alpha 6, uh, both the uh, the Hawker series and the Darter series came with rocket launchers on the back pods, uh, Gatling guns on the front pods. This I uh, changed up the weapons on the front pods to the rail guns, homing rocket launchers on the back. This is more the advanced SV 
hardened steel uh, construction. We have our small jets. And in this case, the warp drive is already there, but the same basic uh, the stuff, the uh, warp drive with that on uh, the fuel tank on a ledge. Where did I hide the... I am pretty darn sure. Embarrassing here to go here and look here and... Say... I... Constructors, two. There's two on there. I knew there was. I just forgot where I put them. <laughs> uh, but we have our O2 station, an armor station. And I want to say that we have the same thing in O2 station and armor station on the hawkers as well, on the back of the front wings. Uh, that, you know, the idea is it's uh, very versatile. But this thing, it takes uh, takes the hawker up into the, and I call it the darter, into our more advanced materials and uh, advanced weapons. This thing pushes 55 meters per second squares minimum in all s six directions. And one of the features of the ha hawkers and darters is that you can uh, manage the maneuverability in these groups here. They've been grouped together so that you can actually uh, do it by, in this case, the darter. It's got so much thrust that I'm like, you could do it in thirds. The hawkers. You, I have it split into halves, so into two groups, which allows to, you know, perhaps you, I'm not in the middle of some sort of combat, don't need to be trying to dodge uh, uh, alien f uh, fire, so in that case I just uh, cut it down and save some fuel and fly a bit longer. Here we have the space skimmer. Uh, essentially I was interpreting the the hawkers and darter, darters into a larger format uh, ended up uh, that's not exactly a uh, one to two translation on scale uh, among other things some things got uh, shortened and stylized for the difference uh, in vessel this here uh, this is before I started getting caught, caught up in motion sensors uh, for automatic doors so much uh, we have our 10 mobile constructors. There is a reason for that. It happens to do with the green backpack, which uh, I will at uh, some point be renaming to be the green saddlebag, which is more consistent with the naming of the Dragonfly series vessels. Uh, but we have here, this is uh, essentially a shielded uh, cockpit. Through this door, we have the forward cockpit, where you can actually see, th uh, get the view from the windows. This one, you know, definitely have to be flying it from the third-person view. Uh, but here, we have a shielded uh, with a protected. It's actually in the s in the middle of this uh, uh, of these pods, uh, so there I it is fairly well protected. And uh, in my testing of this vessel, although I intend to remodel this thing, uh, one to add a warp drive to it, or the ability to at least to have a warp drive, uh, but also my uh, placement of uh, internals has probably gotten better over time, make it a little more realistic that you could actually service this vessel. Uh, there's probably some changes I would probably like to make to it. Oops, sorry about that. Um, bumped, my, bumped my mouse. But uh, yeah, the uh, so I do plan to do some remodeling to this. Be, uh, I'd like to keep it mostly the way it is as it is, just mostly uh, the uh, work with the internals. Uh, see if I can uh, make some improvements, uh, add a little more realism to that. But it, uh, yeah. Over here, this is a prototype. It is you can see it has uh, the paint marks on there really are uh, to mark that I can make the uh, bridge come back here or the uh, cockpit come back here a little more 
uh, something that I might find more appealing. This was just uh, thrown on there so this thing can fly. Uh, this here, it uh, I'm probably going to move that. I may move that. Mm, well, I'm trying to keep the thrusters clear there. It, I'm. I'd like to change these compartments a little bit. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to work it all out. But there are there's definitely some changes I want to make uh, to make it more appealing to myself uh, on this, on the uh, Heimolymph. It is actually named after the material that dragonflies you fill the fill the, the dragonfly wings to give them flight. There is the rumor the eventually uh, HVSV docking will be added to the game. So this is built around that premise that was marked uh, the Warmonger and the uh, T-Niad for Thunder Niad. The Thunder Niad is my own hover vessel. This is uh, designed to be big enough that you can park it there. Those green lines mark uh, where the Thunder Niad and gives me just a little extra space to actually kind of park it there. You know, And the uh, the Warmonger is uh, someone else's creation that uh, I kind of really like, and I uh, marked that where it would, what lines I would probably need to comfortably park it on that pad. I have placed 250 tons of artificial weights on this thing, and it still flies and uh, gives me uh, uh, some little room that I can uh, make some modifications to this, perhaps get the cockpit where I really like it. Uh, maybe make uh, some changes to the passenger uh, compartments that uh, I could uh, still have this thing carry uh, those hover vessels according to their weight. Um, for example, my Thunder Naiad actually only weighs 166 tons. So 250 tons, that's, uh, that's, that's more than uh, far more than needed. Okay. Here we have a, this is going to be the remodel, well this is a proposed remodel of the Swift Skimmer. I have not, uh, there's actually, if we go back to the back end here, I'm just not liking that quite. So there's going to, I've uh, drafted up some concepts, uh, I haven't tried yet applying them to this, uh, but the, uh, so the back end is going to get a, uh, overhaul here. It may have some impact on the rest of the vessel, but for the most part I'm actually kind of liking the interior here. Uh, I realize that some of it's going to be remodeled as I deal with uh, remodeling the back end. But we have our forward cockpit here. We actually, uh, I, my first uh, experimentation on a small vessel with split levels, and here we have our protected cockpit again. Uh, we have, in this case, we do not have 10 mobile constructors. I am just two day, uh, putting two, I believe, on this thing. It may change when I get to the final refit on this. But uh, this thing we, is going to get some changes yet to it. Here is the Swift Skimmer as seen on the workshop. Those spots are actually uh, for adding additional weapons. As you can see, I do not have the same here. I actually may be widening the, this uh, by uh, essentially two blocks wider. I'm not decided for sure I'm doing that. I might just leave it a little narrower, uh, but uh, it's that vessel is actually two blocks narrower than this one. Um, so I may actually I may I may widen it. I may not. Uh, the difference is this one was not built with the small jets from the get-go. It was, we'll see the space skimmer here in a moment, that's uh, is basically the space skimmer with the medium jet stripped out of it uh, because there's a, a significant space difference with the space the medium jets take up compared to the small jets. This one ended up with more, uh, more fuel takes, more generators, which helped compensate for the greater power draw of the small jets. But in the process, it ends up pushing, uh, I believe, 36 meters per second squared in all six directions, uh, whereas the Space Skimmer only pushes 27 meters per second squared in all six directions. This one, I am and again, it's built from with small jets as the concept from the get-go. 
and I want to say that it's uh, pushing as good as the Swift Skimmer, if not a little better. Uh, there is some variance. It's not, uh, whereas the Swift Skimmer, it's all six directions have that same acceleration. We, uh, there are some variances in this one. It is not, uh, you know, it's, I could, I'll be able to quote a minimum acceleration in one direction, but some directions actually have better. Okay, we've already got the blue hawker. I believe I got the red hawker, the green daughter. Okay, the space skimmer, which I have mentioned, uh, but I do not believe I have toured yet. No, I did. Didn't I? Or no, no, I, the swift skimmer I toured the inside. I believe that's what I did. Well, the thing is, the inside of the swift skimmer and the space skimmer is identical. These, uh, it, as I said, the Swift Skimmer is basically the Space Skimmer. I just pulled out the uh, medium jets, threw in the uh, extra fuel tanks and generators, and then threw in the small jets. And uh, that is the essential difference between them. Again, both of them, both of them have this protected cockpit. Uh, both of them, you know, it, as I said, it, it really is the same vessel, uh, just with that difference, uh, which is probably part of the reason why. Well, I, I admit, it is the reason why I am doing a remodel of the Swiss Skimmer. I like Wondrous Variety. Uh, you might see some patterns in here that I'm following, uh, but uh, I tried to vary them up. Uh, the uh, I don't want the Red Hawker to look quite like the Blue Hawker, but I do want them to be to carry the pattern of the four wings, the uh, four what I call pods. Uh, to it. The green daughter, you have the same thing going on. The orange daughter might have, might not have the wings, but again, it has the four pods, uh, the basic construction there. The, uh, you got the theme of the four pods. The Hymalymph doesn't follow that pattern, really, but it's got a whole different purpose. It is supposed to be uh, not so much a fighter, but to lift uh, uh, hover vessels. Although, if you look closely, I suppose there is a little bit of that, you know, it is leaking in a little bit, but not much. You know, it's barely, barely noticeable, um, at least to me. So it's uh, the Heimolymph, but I like the way the Heimolymph looks. Wait, why am I taking this one? I don't want to take this one. There is one more SV I want to show you. It is... And I don't always build mine in the same way, uh, pattern in the same way. And we're going to take this thing. This one's got some kick. So turn this thing on, and away we go. Hardly took any time at all to get up to full speed. Yes. On the green darter, when I'm going for space, I don't even bother pointing the nose to the sky. I'm just like, yeah, just straight up I go. I'm going for space as fast as I can, and this thing will take me straight up like a rocket. Okay, I'm looking for Site B. When I did the video earlier, I got a refresher on that Site A and Site B up here. This is where I do some of my work in space. Site B, I have the SV, and I believe for the small vessels, it will round out and finish off the last of the small vessels for Dragonfly Industries until I have some uh, bug whispering in my ear saying that I need to add a few more. Whether it be that they've added new mechanics to the game that I want to integrate into the uh, collection, or if there's some other reason uh, need, or just the creative bug gets to me. But as we get closer here, you can see we have the green darter, so I have another green darter up here, but that is because I'm using it for reference as I work on the orange darter. The orange darter is supposed to fit the same... S the hawkers and darters are all designed to fit in the same relative space. So I wanted the orange darter to fit in the same relative space. I'm doing the... Uh, the front wing is, you know, the front pod is essentially the same as the green darter there's uh, just like the I want to say the front of the uh, orange hawker and the or is no the front front of the red hawker and the blue hawker are very much uh, uh, 
uh, the same. It's when you get into the back end where they really start to vary. So this, again, the front end, I'm, I'm bar, uh, rebuilding the front end, and then I am doing a, a little different actually here. This starter, I am trying to uh, put some medium jets on here. If I can't get it to work, I'll throw, fall back to my small jets that I typically do for my uh, small vessels. But uh, I'm trying to put some medium jets on here. I want it to be a bit different. Uh, I want it to have a different feel, a different look. Um, there's going to be some strong similarities to the green darter. But the, one of the things I, uh, I had uh, intended you may notice there's a gap between the front pod and the back pod. Here the gap is going to be well, pretty much just that angle right there. The front pod and the back pod will both begin and end at the same spot. I will just simply have one as above the other. So I am uh, basically uh, making that with that was my intention of a this different difference here and so I will be eventually the orange darter will be the next and that will at least well, this is what my plan is that green darter orange darter so I'll have my variety and uh, I'm really gonna try to uh, push this one a little harder on the uh, red line tolerance I'm probably going to, uh, if I can, if I can pull it off. Granted, the green darter, it actually is fairly easy to, to if you're having some red line issues, and I may uh, eventually, when I uh, get around to, um, uh, let's say I get everything finished, and I'm going back and retouching the blueprints, or maybe there's some significant change in the game that motivates me to retouch the blueprints, the green darter, I will probably keep it exactly as it is, unless something about the game requires that I change it, I may consider rechanging, changing out the real guns. That's something I've been debating. But uh, I will probably change the uh, instead of being exact thirds or close to uh, exact thirds on splitting the engines for the groupings. I may redesign them uh, the groupings, uh, the way that things are uh, arranged, so that uh, you could do a. Uh, uh, have something where you could uh, have red line tolerances, maximizing your thrust in all six directions, max, you know, as I said, trying to say, uh, maximizing your red rat line tolerance, ma or maybe uh, maximizing uh, for your high G worlds. So, with 55 uh, meters per second squared minimum in all six directions, yeah, it, a 5G world should be no problem. It's the atmospheric. Uh, density that could be an issue and that's where I you know, may having doing it you know a rework eventually of that so that uh, you, you st uh, shut things off in a different pattern maybe in that case you know could make a very uh, uh, variation of the green darter that's uh, still capable of high G worlds but uh, more suitable to deal with atmospheric density at the same time. Right now, atmospheric density, I just shut off uh, uh, one or two thirds of the thrusters in RCS, and you know, it's not a, you know, it's fairly easy. Uh, that is one of the bases I've been working on. This is just a habit of mine, it's, uh, but I'm focusing on the uh, small vessels here, so that is just a background item. Site A is a capital vessel I am working on, so we will not go at there go over there for that time uh, at this time uh, at this time uh, to take a look at that so that will probably be another video uh, where I might show a little more of the work uh, both what's completed and what's being worked on for Dragonfly Industries now be aware that I am doing four collections each of them has a vast number of stuff it's the and uh, and as the game changes, things may be added or uh, removed from these collections. Uh, but it is one of those things that, uh, for some whatever reason, shortly after I started playing this game, I started uh, coming with ideas. I wanted variety. Uh, I had come up with uh, ideas for um, four to five, 
I want to say five different starting uh, small vessels, a number of uh, uh, more advanced small vessels, uh, a whole bunch of capital vessels, and along the process in there, you know, like with the the Dragonfly series, a lot of them, uh, in this case, they do have connections to each other uh, visually, or at least I try to as much as I can. I kind of have some sort of theme that runs through. Uh, I may uh, uh, run this for the Dragonfly series. So these kind of had a theme going to them. While a bunch of the other stuff, I like the Wondrous Variety, and so they they didn't fit with the Dragonfly series so much. So then I, you know, first uh, the Dragonfly uh, series, or my Dragonfly Industries, as I am calling it now, they, they were the first kind of collection within uh, all my blueprints. And they fit together. But I didn't want that to define all my blueprints. So that is why I also have, in addition to the Dragonfly Industries, I now have uh, the Sweet Lemons. I have the uh, FTB and Inspiration Traders. Those are my three other collections in addition to that. But that way I can have my variety of different blueprints, but then divide them into, uh, in this case, Dragonfly Industries is a, a visual theme uh, going uh, uh, interwoven through them. It doesn't hit all their stuff. Uh, but some of the other stuff is just more support uh, stuff to bring uh, the full uh, gameplay to the collection. But, you know, and uh, well, I, at this point I'm probably going to go ahead and hit the green darter. And I'll head back to the planet and I will cut my video there. Have yourself a... Uh, nice uh, time and I hope you appreciate the uh, uh, little tour of the small vessels for Dragonfly Industries.